I mentioned somewhere here recently in one of my last videos, I don't remember which one, maybe it was last week's manga news video, that there were three different shoujose anime that dropped in one day, and y'all, it was true. I checked the dates this morning, and it was true. It was true. We're gonna talk about it today. Hello friends, happy Monday, so excited that you're here. I don't have much manga news really this week, more of just like cover reveals I want to share. I know this past week that Seven Seas did 12 different Donami, I think I'm saying that name right, license announcements, so many congrats to everybody who had a win with that. That was like amazing, I was really happy for them. Was not happy when Seven Seas had a put out an official notice announcement saying, do not harass our contractors or people we work with or anything like that like yeah please don't please don't be that person don't don't bully or harass anybody working in publishing pretty sure that every single person that is is giving their 100% to really create something special for us readers but let's move on to happier things rather than that I mean well I was happy about the license announcements not happy about the bullying everything I'm gonna talk about today all the links are down below if you want to check out anything and yeah let's go ahead and start off with the biggest news in my opinion from last week K manga came out and guess what they said that it is not fully available internationally, but it is now officially available in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. What a win. I was so excited, especially for many of my Canadian friends that I know. They're like, look, I'm on K-Manga. I'm like, yes. That means I can finally start recommending more things that are on K-Manga because I have been very hesitant to talk about anything I do see going K-Manga because I've gotten quite a few comments saying, well, it's not available in my country. And, you know, it loses a little bit of its funness when, you know, you recommend something and somebody's like well I can't read it because it's digital only in your country not mine. Thankfully though they did say because if you're like well my country's still not on there. Thankfully they did say hang tight we are aiming to add more countries as soon as we can and I really hope that they do so it's really available internationally because there's so many great manga on there. It is such a great resource if like you know something has an anime or it's about to get physically printed and you can see like oh the digital version is available on here and go try out that series and know if it's something you want to watch or something you want to pick up. Now this next ramble, I'm gonna call it a ramble, is not really necessarily related quite to K-Manga, more of Kodansha. Well, if you guys know, if you're on X slash Twitter, I didn't really see on Instagram, there was lots of conversations on the Discord groups that I'm part of though, then you can know there was a lot of very angry and upset people that after Kodansha's license announcements, which I talked about my favorite one, the only digital Jose that got licensed last week, is that, you know, a lot of people were saying, Kodansha is just increasingly like this hasn't been like I mean I haven't even been part of the manga community I feel like for a really long time and I know people who've been around a lot longer than I have and have said that like Kodansha just does not deliver to the Shoujose community they increasingly have just sidelined the Shoujose, Shoujose community and it was just really it was pretty bad last week I'll admit Beyond X was a hot place to be at and I was just like I'm overwhelmed by all the yelling and screaming but here's the thing the reason I bring this up is because if you were one of those people that just like you have consistently been like Kodansha you need to do better you need to do better and you're making it known to them and feel like you're just shouting into the void people have listened including Kodansha no we don't have any new license announcements no I don't even know if we'll get any more in the future in like a bigger number and where we actually see they're putting in the effort but if you go to Kodansha's website or at least at the time of filming this video on their website they actually focus shoujo say and they use the term shoujo say. I have only seen that term really used among fans and to see a publisher actually give this acknowledgement and feature series like Sign of Affection, Mars, I See Your Face Turn Away, and even one of their newer Jose digital series called That Tramp is a Beauty. Like, I was really impressed, at least in the sense of the people who are putting their energy and their anger, letting Kodansha know they are being heard. They are being heard. And it wasn't just Kodansha, but also if you are interested in supporting a a smaller business that sells manga and you can buy from them, Mary Manga Company. Now, I've heard very great things about them, but I was so impressed that they actually did, they're like, hey, we've heard the Shoujose community. And as somebody that sells manga, they are like, we want to show what the numbers look like on our back end and what that means. And they show the numbers, they did an example, but the really cool thing is they're like, you know, we realize we could be putting in greater efforts into making sure that we have Shoujo manga 
in stock and that he actively voiced that like the person that owns I guess Marymount company runs it that they actively voice what changes they're going to make so they can help provide shoujo say manga for the, the community and I just thought that was such an incredible thing and just another moment of like hey people are hearing us not just the people saying because you're not buying shoujo say manga of course you're not getting more like what kind of take is that anyway it was just really really cool and also starfruit books they came out and they said hey we do plan to release shoujo and jose manga next year they've already talked about is it the phantom i I think i'm missing some words in there but the phantom bat which is a classic shoujo manga that they've already said that they got the license they're going to be releasing that i know they have the license to clan under the moon this was announced last year and i'm really hoping we get it next year because i even mentioned that in my top 10 most anticipated releases of 2024. So hopefully we'll be getting that. But they also just said recently that, hey, they just licensed a Jose Yakuza manga, which is really cool. It currently has one volume out, I guess, in Japan. That is really exciting. So there definitely are people who are hearing the needs and the wants of the show Jose community and really hope that that is just encouraging news. So I don't know what kind of change will come in the future, but at least we can know that they did hear us. If change will happen, I don't know, but all we can do is hope. And one one last thing, going back to Kanacha, I don't know what this is, but Kanacha actually did a tweet on X saying, if you had something wrong with your volume one of Metalist, there was some kind of issue with the print edition, you can actually fill out this form and get a replacement copy. I was like, what kind of issue is, is it? Because they didn't say, but then I was reading the tweets and somebody said, or they mentioned to somebody that if you had a misprinted page, and I think it was like page 115. So if you have an issue with your Metalist volume one, definitely go check out that form, see what you need to do to fill it out and get a replacement copy. Now let's go ahead and talk about the shoujo say anime that are coming out next year because if there's anything we are really seeing a full movement it feels like of shoujo say getting animated and I just think that is the most coolest thing and yeah last Sunday October 20th I think it was we had three different shoujo say announcements so I sort of did from the order that I saw them. The first one that I saw was the holy grail of Eris. Now I know a few friends that actually really like this but I feel like it's super underrated. I didn't even know it was a villain this manga until it just came out somewhere. I think it was like Yen Press that promoted it. I'm like, oh, oh, that's a villainous manga. And I am so curious and so tempted to try this. The anime is going to be coming out next spring. And apparently this is a really big deal because I think it said there was like 1 million. Yes, that this series has sold over 1 million copies. I don't know if that's just manga or it's probably a combination of manga and light novels, which we do have both in English. And I think like the manga is up to volume eight with volume nine out for pre order or volume 10. And for from what I, it's funny, I can't believe I don't remember because I looked at the preview, I did some research because I'm like, well, it's a villainous manga. That's probably my cup of tea. And it's about this young woman. She sees... Uh, the execution of this other woman at this area in her town and she was looking for somebody and she was a little kid at that. We have a time skip that happens and we see that she's engaged, that her father's in debt and he's basically sold her off in a way to get married to this man who can help get their debt waived or get it significantly down or canceled. But the thing is, is when they're at this ball, I don't know if they were going to formally announce their engagement, but everybody knows that they're engaged, like the main girl and her fiance. And there's rumors that he's been cheating. And I'm like, oh man, we got that kind of fiance. And she's looking for him. She goes outside. And what does she see? She sees him kissing another woman. I said, oh yeah, I, I was disappointed in that guy. And who should we see though? That comes out, not the cheating fiance and the other woman, but it's the same woman who was executed at the beginning of the manga. And I was like, um, what? Excuse me? And the main female lead is like, she, I feel like she recognized her, but she didn't remember who she was and she's like well did you want to come into the ball and the lady who I'm assuming is the villainess is like what really I can go in there and she's like yeah and she goes in she's like thank you and that's where the preview ended of what I read and supposedly from the blurb that lady is dead she's dead dead but she's here at this ball and I'm like what is going on what is going on I'm a little nervous personally to pick up the manga because I did hear it gets pretty dark so if you've read it please let me know if you would recommend it if you think I would like it because 
the urge to not just go out and buy volume one has been overwhelming right now. And But I would really love to know people who've read it, what they think. So it had really good reviews on Goodreads for the most part, but I didn't really know anybody personally that had read it. So I'm like, I need people I know to tell me if they liked it or not. But yes, the anime is coming out next year. I definitely am really looking forward to hearing more about it because again, I'm very curious about this one. For the second Shoujo Say anime that got announced, I was really surprised. So a few weeks ago, from, I think it was back in September, that from Seven Seas, we got a license announcement for the Two Perfect Saint. We got the manga and the light novels. Well, what do you know? That is also getting a anime. And I was like, what? I didn't know that this manga was like a big deal, for the lack of a better word, in the sense I didn't know that it was super popular in Japan because I never had heard of it before and before now. And it's funny because I had this on my reader list, but then I was like, mm, I don't really know. I think it's because I read a different Saint manga manga and I, I didn't love it and so I'm scared that I won't like this one but my friend what did, how did she recommend it I should have saved it but she basically did say if you are a fan of my happy marriage and you're wanting to see a female heroine really start to emotionally bloom and be able to really express herself and just live as a human then strong chances are you will like this one I know that she's very perfect and she's not cute like when I was reading the blurb earlier and so she's sold off she is sold off to a neighboring kingdom mind you she's the saint of this country and they're like no I don't want you there is a sister involved and I'm like oh man I'm like hopefully she's not too too bad because the last Saint manga I read that sister was awful plain awful there was it was just bad but this one's coming out of spring 2025 there was no like previous since it's not officially out in English yet because I think this one comes out in at least the manga comes out in February of next year so I couldn't read to see like get a feel of it but I am curious and when my friend sold it to me about her becoming less robotic and more human I was like I want to know I want to know the anime like there was a brief PV teaser looked really good it looked really good I, I hope so desperately that she finds happiness because if I remember right when I read the blurb that one thing is is like nobody in her kingdom seems to love her but when she goes to this other country she's expecting to live like a slave but then the prince ends up falling for her and deeply caring for her. and I'm like let's go Fia let's go other dude who hopefully will be your fiance in 10 times better than your ex fiance and last but not least of any shoujo anime I never expected past the monster meat is getting an anime it is getting an anime and I just was so surprised by this I am definitely behind I loved volume one a lot. I really enjoyed volumes two and three and I'm behind. I'm behind. Now this is on K-Manga. This is on K-Manga. So I'm gonna go try it, which I would suggest trying it. Volume one was a blast. It's about a young woman who loves monster meat. And that is sort of a taboo thing in her where she lives. Actually been sort of like pushed the outskirts of society. People don't want to be with her or even around her. And her father's like, you really need to find a man, a fiance. You need to get married. Her stepmom, not cool, is like, we're going to send you to like wherever. I think it was like not a chapel, but to go be a nun more or less if you don't get married. So her stepmom's not that cool. But her dad just wants her to get married and live well. And so as she's at like some kind of outing, it wasn't a ball or anything, but it was a place where she could matchmaking could happen. Well, a monster shows up and the, I think his name is the mad blood duke or something like that and he is also pushed the outskirts because he goes and he fights these monsters he doesn't seem even phased by them well for her it was sort of like love at first sight uh but not necessarily for him but how he could kill these monsters and she can make monster meat and make these recipes out of the monsters that he slayed and so it begins like this really cute romance with monster loving food girl and a man who's very powerful and slays the monsters it was very very sweet and I need to catch up I think I'm pretty behind because I think we're what like five to six volumes at this point the covers are so cute I think this is going to be an amazing anime and honestly I can say of the three so far this is the one I'm most excited for which also comes out in spring of 2025 I just I want to see everything animated I think it's going to again be a blast it's very much a foodie manga there is romance for sure but and I felt like where I had stopped that it was increasingly getting deeper than just the 
these cute little romantic moments between them because they have the most cutest blushy moments. And yeah, it was getting deeper. We find out things about her mom. We And we find out, you know, now she, I was about to say a spoiler, but we find out more things about her in this world. And so yeah, I would highly recommend it. It's a really fun time and really excited that we're getting the anime. Now for this next one, shout out to my friend Jess Kawaii Heart because she D DM'd me on Discord. She's like, hey, look what's coming in November. And I was like, oh, what's coming? And I was like, an OVA of my happy marriage. Yes, episode 13 is coming out November 22nd. This is an OVA. We know that season two is coming out in January. And so if you've been missing my happy marriage, stay tuned. You have an OVA. You have an additional episode that is coming. I'm really excited, very curious of what this is going to entail. Our Netflix has been so bad. So I still have not finished my happy marriage, but I am caught up with the manga. So I can say that at least, but it's a wonderful story. Very touching, very emotional, and really excited that we're getting this OVA. And speaking of getting more things, now, you know, the movie Look Back was in theaters at some point. I was not able to see it, but I did see in passing that Amazon Prime got, I guess you would say, the rights to put the movie on Prime Video. So November 7th, Look Back is coming to Prime. And so if you have Amazon Prime and you've been wanting to see it at home for the first time, like myself, or just wanting to see it again, here comes that opportunity. And I was like, man, we are getting so many good anime. Like, this is just so cool. I've gotten a lot of recommendations to watch this movie uh, as well as read the manga. And I am excited because I actually do have Amazon Prime. So I will be checking this out, maybe not November 7th right away, but I'm really looking forward to it. And yeah, I hope that I can actually say like glowing things about it and join the hype train with everybody else. Now for this last little bit of section, we're just going to talk about some cover reveals that I really, really enjoyed. And the first one that I want to talk about that looks so incredibly cute is a Satan manga called April Showers Bring May Flowers. I am so stoked for this one. It's sort of funny because I was going to mention this, you know, like each month in my Shoujo Say release calendar videos, I just talk about like, or I mention highlight spotlight <laughs> up to four different shonen seinen manga that I'm personally picking up and really excited for. And I was going to feature that in, you know, Friday's video. But then when I was looking, this one's supposed to come out December 3rd, but it was supposed to come out at the end of November. So I don't know when it's really saying, sorry, you didn't ask for that ramble, but I was just like, I'm really excited for this. It's about, I think a young woman who is more on the chubbier side. I get the, the vibe that she just feels like she won't find that special romance. But then this one guy starts having feelings for her. And I think he's more on the popular side in their school. And it just... It seems like a really cute romance. <laughs> That's all I have and I love the cover so much and I'm just like, yes, please give it to me and press. I'm really, really excited. I have heard very good things about this one and very, very much looking forward to reading it. The next one is Luciole Has a Dream. This is by the same creator as Mr. Villain's Day Off. This one though is on hiatus, but look how dreamy this first cover looks. It just looks so beautiful. And even though I feel like the cover or the title is a little bit hard to read because of the font, I do feel like it fits the vibe of this cover so incredibly well. I don't remember anything what this one's about except for it's fantasy and it's a Jose and I was sold when I heard that it was by the same creators Mr. Villain's Day Off. Though I should have picked up, I can't remember the other one, I'll try and leave the cover here, but it's the one with the twins, Jemima's something. And I wanted to get it, but I heard so many mixed things and that some people are like, I sobbed when I read it and other people are like, it's super cute. And I'm like, well, which, which is it? Because I feel like you don't typically sob at things that are super cute. <laughs> like cry, get emotional, yeah, but sob? No, that doesn't that doesn't seem like they all mix together. So if you've read it as well, let me know what you thought because I really love Mr. Villain's Day Off and I'm really excited for this fantasy manga. I think it's going to be a really good one. I think there's two volumes out. It's definitely not Axe. I think it's just because the creator's focusing on Mr. Villain's Day Off that she hasn't come back to working on this one, but hopefully she will, especially if I really love it because I know I'm going to want more. Oh, and then Eyes Press showed us the cover of The Remarried Empress Volume 9. Navier looks stunning, beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love her so much. She is so amazing. And just, I, I love it. I'm really excited. I'm always here for her happiness and her finally getting married to Henry. Like, let's go. Let's go. You know, there's gonna be drama. There is drama. It's been a while since I've read like digitally on webtoon. So I'm like, I don't remember everything that went down, but I know things went down and I was really angry at a certain character somewhere after around that wedding. And I'm just like, I need to brace myself because I was just, I was seeing, I was seeing 
scene, right? This is the scene. The wedding's great. The wedding's great. Navier's gonna be happy, and that's the best thing right there. But that character and their actions, I remember reading it, and then I, I got out of my bed and I took my pillow and I just slammed it on my bed because I was so angry, y'all. I've never done that with a manga. I or manual, excuse me, I've never done that. But yeah, I was mad. I was mad. But the but this could be good. This could be good. Maybe I just did not sell how good this volume is. But I love it. Navier looks beautiful, and of course I had a feature because she's just so stunning. Last but not least, I am loving so much what Viz Media is doing with the haiku covers of the Omnibus and they just shared volume four, which covers volumes 10 through 12. Ugh. Look at Bogoto and Kuro. They look great. Seeing this color, like I know it's in the Haikyuu art book, which I have, but seeing it on the cover is everything. Like they are delivering and creating new Haikyuu fans or just feeding us Haikyuu fans already. It's beautiful. It was, it made me so happy. And I was like, we're going to end this snow in Haikyuu because I have not talked about much about Haikyuu in the last manga news videos. And I need to talk about my boys because they're amazing. And so I just wanted to feature this cover because I love it so much. And I'm really happy that we have these two getting some time Time to shine when it comes to the covers because I feel like just a lot of side characters that didn't really get covers for the, the main covers of the series are getting time to shine with these omnibus and I'm all here for it and I'm really struggling not to get the whole series all over again I'm like I don't need it I told myself we don't have the space for that do I wish I had the space so that I could you know what I mean <laughs> but that is everything that I want to talk about with you today friends I hope that you saw some exciting manga news hopefully we'll have some manga news next week as well I'm not really sure if Seven Seas is going to be doing more license announcements for the rest of this year but I'm sure there will still be plenty of manga and anime news to talk about and I can't wait for 2025 with all of the amazing anime that's coming out. Let me know what anime you're most excited for and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and thank you so much for watching. Bye!